I'm Granddad Bill, but I'm having the time of my life, yeah! Hey, I'm Lisa London, and I'm on my way to Hollywood Boulevard, where Billy Idol will be getting his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Actually, the ceremony started at 11.30. It is now 12 o'clock. I hope I haven't missed too much. Let's go see. Like I said, there Before we hear from Billy, there are two guest speakers here to say a few words about our honoree. Please welcome to the stage, Henry Rollins. So it's a question we can ask. Why are we honoring Billy Idol on the Hollywood Walk of Fame today? Well, it could be for the reason that in the late 1970s in England, there was an explosion of music that is still with us today, with bands like The Clash and The Damned and The Art Attacks and The Adverts and The Sex Pistols, Buzzcocks, Eater, X-Ray Specs, Susie and the Banshees, and Generation X. And while a lot of these bands, all of them great, were singing about how things don't work and how life isn't so great, Generation X stood out because they wrote songs about being young. And you can be young-ish for a while, but you're only young for like one summer. It's a lightning strike, and if you blink, you miss it. And over three albums on Chrysalis Records and a bunch of singles around those three albums, Generation X captured that to the degree to where you listen to those songs like Night of the Cadillacs and Day by Day, 100 Punks Rule, No, 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 Your Generation, Dancing with Myself, and on and on. That music still holds up fantastically decades later. So maybe that is why Billy Idol gets a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Or maybe it's because, as all bands do eventually, Generation X broke up and Billy Idol came to the United States and started uh, releasing one great solo record after another, like the self-titled first album, Rebel Yell, Whiplash Smile, Charmed Life, with huge singles that are really, really good, like White Wedding and Eyes Without a Face. And maybe that's why we're all here to honor Billy Idol. Or maybe it's because of all that work and all that great music there's been sales of over 40 million records, which is unbelievable. It's incredible. And so maybe that is a reason why we're here on the Hollywood Walk of Fame today. But what about this? It's sunny, it's Friday, the rain has stopped, let's go with this. Could it be that Billy Idol has rock and roll in his veins? and punk rock in his DNA. That is to say, he's the real thing. And maybe that's why we're here today. Because decade after decade, he has remained himself. And that takes a lot of guts and a lot of integrity. And I, I want to go with that being the reason we're here today. And so, it's a great day for Los Angeles. It's a great day for Hollywood. It's a great day for rock and roll. It's a great day for punk rock. And it's a great day for all of us because we get to be together with Billy. And it's a great day for Billy Idol. Congratulations, sir. Before I introduce our second speaker, we have a few VIPs in the crowd today supporting Billy Idol. Walk of Famer Andy Medodian. Actor Clifton Collins Jr. Yeah. Musician Steve Stevens. Yeah. Musician Steve Jones. Yeah. Please welcome to the stage Shepard Ferry. Yeah. Thank you so much. Congrats, oh, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you, sir. 
Um, it's hard to follow Henry Rollins. I mean, that, that's a, another idol of mine, but I'm, I'm gonna do my best here. When I was 13 years old, I heard the song White Wedding and was captivated immediately. I saw Billy on MTV and there he is, leather clad, uh, adorned with chains. He had a lip snarl that was like a shorthand manifesto for defiance and I was in love immediately. I wanted to be Billy Idol. Billy was just the coolest. He was, you know, he, he's quite a handsome guy, still is. But, you know, I, I, I was fascinated by, by his image and what he was about, but I didn't know much about punk rock. I grew up in South Carolina. Um, but then I found the Sex Pistols and quickly realized that Billy had been a fan of the Sex Pistols, had gotten into punk rock by being a member of the Bromley contingent, which also included Susie Sue of Susie and the Banshees, obsessively following the Sex Pistols, and his belief in rebellion of do-it-yourself culture, he formed his own band, Generation X, which is a fantastic band. But, ironically, Billy was not really embraced by the punk crowd because he committed the crimes of being very good looking and writing melodic songs. This was, this was not accepted in the punk rock world. However, he was able to turn those liabilities into assets when he transitioned to his solo career, moving to New York City, teaming up with Steve Stevens, and making great songs, great records. Of course, thank you, Shepard. And Henry, it's just, uh, it's been fantastic being friends, but also just working with you and just working with, with LA, really, working with the people here who live here for a very long time. I've lived here for 35 years. That's the longest I've lived anywhere. But uh, I'd just like to uh, start off by thanking the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce and for all the fans for coming here. because you are the best and quite simply I'm here today really because of you, it's because of your love that I'm here, you've supported me all this time. Uh, 47 years now I've been doing this, so. Uh, also to, uh, I just want to thank my family and my kids, my grandkids are here. And that's another thing I've grown here in Los Angeles with my family, I came out here deliberately to have children and uh, the fruits of that are here today. It's pretty incredible. I'm granddad Bill, but I'm having the time of my life, yeah! It really is crazy to find myself getting an award like this or being honored in this way. I mean, uh, you know, 47 years of doing this after I started in Generation X and uh, 35 years after coming here. But I just really, could never have imagined anything like this. I mean, initially, we did the music back in the mid-70s during a punk rock time. There wasn't much hope or anything. We decided if there's nothing, there's no future, we're gonna do what we love, and that's what I did. I did the music because I loved it. It wasn't for any other reason, really. I always dreamt of a life in music or a life in the arts, but you just didn't really know if you could ever really do that, you know. There's a lot of people telling you don't try, you know, but uh, that was what was great about the people around us back then. They were sort of telling you to try. Yeah, I sat at home, you know, in Bromley, uh, watching all the sort of music stars I loved, a lot of them who were on this walk, you know, um, David Bowie and the Beatles or The Doors, and uh, there's a number of people like that, and I'm a great musicians. But it's also, uh, a lot of actors, I really watched a lot of, we watched the old stars, and when I grew up, we were watching the old stars in black and white on the television. But they're all the new stars in the movies, you know, so it was like, uh, yeah, Marlon Brando and people on the television and uh, Streetcar and, or James Stewart and all the best, Anthony Mann, Westerns, I love all of them. And then later on, of course, we were watching, you know, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and everybody in the movies, and then a lot of these people, are on this walkway, and I could never have imagined being amongst them, you know, it's just... I'd also just like to thank uh, Clifton Collins in particular, 
and his relative Pedro Gonzalez Gonzalez, who is on this walkway too, because uh, one way or another, the spirit of Pedro is enabling this to happen. That's what I think. So there's a lot of these people I looked up to as a kid. You know, I sort of saw what they were doing. You know, I could never have imagined really doing it myself, but you just had to try. And that's what I did. I listened to their music, I watched their films, and then I dreamt my own reality. It's an honor to be here with them, you know. I just want to thank all my collaborators. Yeah, cheers, love. I'd just like to thank all my collaborators. There's a number of them here. Um, of course, Steve Stevens in particular. 42 years we've been rocking. Of course, we love the Idol classics, but we're putting out new music today that we're enjoying. So it's still a vital, very vital relationship. And that, that feels great. I can't imagine, I could never imagine that, that at this stage of my life, I'd be enjoying the music I'm making. But I'd also like to thank, you know, the, my Generation X bandmates, Tony James, Derwood Andrews, Mark Laff, of course, Keith Forsey for producing a lot of my solo stuff. Uh, Tommy English today and Joe Janiak and Adam Savini. Uh, but also I'd like to, yeah, the uh, Billy Idol band are all here. Stephen McGrath, Billy Morrison, Eric Aldenius, Paul Trudeau. We've been together quite a few years now, so it's like, I don't know, I really think of them as friends and fellow musicians, but they're really friends first, I've got a feeling. But uh, I just can't tell you enough. Uh, this is a great honor. I, uh, I, w I just can't believe it in a way. I'm a little bit, you know, it's in a bit of an out-of-body experience. But I just want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank all the fans. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And rock on! Yeah! Going into Amoeba Records, so Billy is still here. He's just mainly shopping. 